to Dawes. Davis is a lovely kick. Left foot going and going. It's a goal. And Collingwood within a kick. Lewis and here is Swan. Deep in the pocket. He's kicked the goal. Here he comes. Kick is on the way. The biggest kick of the night. And he puts it straight through the middle. The stakes are high. Throws it on the boots and on swing before him. He's kicked the magnificent goal out of that. Ah, uh, yes, President Eddie Happy. The Magpies responded to the challenge when it mattered most and they get a chance to uh, go back-to-back in season 2011. Sharon Wellingham is our special guest tonight on One Week at a Time. Thanks for coming in, Sharon. Thank you very much for having I, me. I guess the... The big question for Collingwood fans is uh, you've had some recovery the last couple of days. Uh, ben Johnson, Reid, Jolly, how are those three? All pulled up really well. I was with them this afternoon down at uh, Port Melbourne Beach doing a bit of extra walking in the water and they've uh, all pulled up really well, which is good signs. Well, Jolly's the one, I guess, with the biggest question mark hanging over him. Uh, what's wrong with him and, and how's, how's he going to be able to get up this week? Um, I'm not too sure what it is that's wrong with him. I didn't. Well answered. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I think it is a groin, and um, so hopefully he can pull through and you know make f- through for one more week. Was he giving himself, rating himself a chance today? He, yeah, he always does. He always rates himself very highly for a coming through uh, injury, as he's done well over the last couple of years, and so he's giving himself a very good chance of coming through. Sherrod, can uh, you tell uh, our viewers what you do after a Friday night game? Because uh, obviously, you know close and exciting and in the rooms and we see shots of that and we do a few interviews on radio and then we all go home. What do you do? Um, well, we head across uh, straight over to the Westpac Centre. It's good having it right there across the road from the MCG and uh, we get in there and do a little bit of bike, a little bit of weights, just um, keep the body moving and start recovery straight away, get in the ice bars. We've got a pool there that we uh, do a few laps in and yeah, start ticking the body over, getting ready for the next week. Sherrod, uh, talk us through Friday night. It, w- it was one of the great uh, finals that uh, I think I can remember ever seeing. And I'll probably look at your side. Did, did, have you done a re- review of the game already, or you don't worry about it at finals time? <coughs> no, we'll do our review tomorrow morning. We'll um, have a look at the game. To me, I think you, looking at the game, I think you probably go through about half a dozen players and think it's almost the most poor game, the poorest game that you've played for the year individually for some players, and yet you've been able to get through it. Did it, did it feel like that for you? You had a lot of players as quiet as they've been for 12 months? Yes, I don't know if that's the case as much as um, everyone. Every, the whole side was probably just a bit off on Friday night, and um, you know, even the ball probably didn't bounce our way a few times, and decisions and things like that didn't go our way, which is not always going to be the case in footy. But um, you know, we will take a positive, like you said, from that, knowing that um, we weren't at 100%, and we still managed to scrap out a victory, which is good signs. Your form going into last year's grand final, compared uh, team-wise, compared to this year, do you think there's a major difference in the way you're playing? I don't think so. I think, um, you know, last year with the preliminary final, we uh, we kind of really stamped our authority in that game early and coasted through for the second half, so we knew we were going to win, whereas this game, um, like you said, we had to fight it out. But I think that's a, a positive in that um, we've gone in with two really good finals games, close contests with um, big bodies hitting, and so we know what we're up for. Dane, Dane, Dane sorry, Dane Swan. Yeah. You, you look at him, he's the most unfashionable player. We've talked about it many, many times. Looks like a bag of bones. Is, is, he, the, is he the fittest player <laughs> on your list? Uh, maybe not the fittest, but like you see, uh, he can just sprint and he's got that. Ex- yeah, amazing. he's got the pace to burn, and um, you know he's he's our most highly uh, rotated player, I think. And so you know he'll get on there, um, do his damage, and burn off his opponent, which I think is why he's been so hard to tag over the last couple of years. 32 disposals. He had 14 in the first half, 18 in the second. In that second half, he also had 11 contested possessions, six clearances. He really rose when he needed to. Well, uh, to me, he just stood out in the last quarter as being able to power the length of the field when others couldn't. And uh, he he was really instrumental in getting his team over the line. Certainly played a great second half. Uh, The coach, you've obviously, uh, I'm not sure if you had a little bit of replay or not, but uh, very emotional after the game. What, what, What do you see, what do you think when you see that and what was his message straight after the game? Oh, I think that that was just um, a lot of admiration for the team having having got over the line for him. And, um, you know, he um, probably was thinking that it might have been his last time in the box up there in front of... Uh in front of the team, so <laughs> the emotions got the better of him, as I'm sure it has in the past. But you know, he's got one more week, and um, he'll be looking did, very did, much did forward. Did he address to it. you straight after? Did he? Was he able to, to speak to you? Yeah, yeah, he was. He uh, he was fine by the time he got down to the change room. So um, yeah, he, he he got it all got out. It all out. Yeah. <laughs> Sherrod, it's uh, three quarter time, you're down by 17 points, and a lot of us are sitting there at the game thinking, 
you're in real strife. It's going to be hard to, to, to win. There's a, a bit of mail coming out that the coach said, just keep playing the way we play. And that Nick Maxwell grabbed the boys and said, hey, let's not die wondering here. We need to start attacking the corridor more than we have done in the past. Can you recall the captain saying that? I think he said, um, you know, let's have a real crack and um, not hold back. And we were kind of uh, playing within ourselves, I think, for those first three quarters. I think I was most worried in the third quarter. I was speaking with the boys today. I think during the third quarter, start of the third quarter, was when we weren't quite switched on well enough. And, um, you know, and they had a few uh, easy entry 50s into the forward 50. And I think that was when I was a bit worried. But come the fourth quarter, when we started taking risks and um, playing the corridor a bit more, I got a bit more confidence in the side. And I knew that we were going to get over top. Did you play the round 24 game against Geelong when they belted you? Certainly did. It uh, wasn't well, too good a game to be out there. What's your memory of that? Did, did you have a feeling going into the game that you know nothing really hinged on it, that it was just a, a run in the park? Um, maybe subconsciously. I think the team team might have had that view. But um, you know, when we went out there and then we fell behind and then uh, we kind of knew when we at a certain point we weren't going to be able to get get the uh, points at that stage. But we knew that it wasn't going to make a difference, so we kind of put it in the back pocket. So give us an insight into what grand final week's going to be like for you now. I'm sure you've got friends that you didn't know you had that suddenly want grand final tickets and uh, relatives that, uh, you know, tell us about managing that for a start. Everyone, you know, wants, wants a ticket and just how the whole week plays out for you. Um, yeah, well, I think that's one of the experiences I will have from last year. Just, um, you know, you got to can't really can't try to please everyone. You've got to be How a bit more ruthless. Do you get? We get six tickets from the AFL, which is very, very generous of them. So, um, no, we're just going to have to be ruthless, I suppose, and kind of tell people that we don't have any spare ones. <laughs> so some of your family will miss out? They'll be, you've got brothers or sisters that won't be able to go? Yeah, well, I've got brothers and sisters who won't be able to go, but, um, yeah, all the, all the parents will be there and... Uh, you're very good friends with Buddy Franklin. How did you see his battle with uh, Tarrant on Friday night? It was very good. I thought I thought Bud might have sealed it for them um, with so that one final freakish goal, kick it? goal, wasn't it? And so, um, you know, disappointing for the Hawks, but um, you know, what can you do really? Because he's such a hard man to hold down. He certainly is. I think I think Taz has done really well over him the last couple of years. Speaking speaking with um, Buddy away from. The club, he says that Chris is one of the hardest players he has to play on just because he's got the pace to go with him and, and the strength, which is, you know, Buddy's strength as well, being able to break away. And I think um, Buddy tried to get him up the ground a bit, but Taz was able to stay with him. How much of a factor not having Mark Neal there when you come into the breaks at quarter time before the game has worked with you so closely? Craig McRae stepped in. Is it, was, it, was it weird? No, it certainly wasn't. Craig, uh, Craig did a great job. I think he stepped into the fold beautifully and um, took, up, took up the slack left by Nildy and um, you know, probably added a little bit, which I think was really good. When you start thinking about visualising and, and seeing yourself playing in the grand final, uh, do, you, do you give it a couple of more days or does it just creep into your mind as you're driving the car, lying on the couch? Are you thinking of Selwood? Are you thinking of Bartel? Are you thinking of Cameron Ling? Um, no, not so much. I'm um, probably going to try and not think too much about it this uh, early stage. But um, yeah, certainly later on in the week, I'll uh, start thinking about it probably every minute of every day. When, when do you get told by the coaching staff what your role will be on grand final day? Um, well, it's a Saturday game, so I'll probably uh, after Wednesday I'll know what my uh, role will be come grand day, and then um, you know we'll get back in there on Friday and fine-tune it and know exactly what I need to do. Sure, one of your roles would be around the stoppages and kicking goals. You, you had a sensational knack of doing it and doing it consistently well. And I can recall one you know, from the grand final last year that really sticks out in my mind and, uh, and again a couple of weeks ago. It's been a real good part of your game, hasn't it? Uh, you look dangerous every time there's a stoppage and here's one from last year's grand final. To get through traffic and, and score, it's a great strength of yours. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I enjoy kicking a goal, as I think everybody does. And, um, you know, with the great ruck work that we've got, and um, <clears throat> if I can get on the end of it, I'm very happy. And Mick, Mick is also very happy if we can get uh, forward 50 goals. You've been rolled by the Cats twice this year. How can you turn things around? Let, let, let's, let's say round 24 boys was a bit, a bit unusual, given the fact mm. that they had nothing to play for. But you got rolled... The earlier. other one was only by three points. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, think, I think that uh, we're going to... Probably look at the other game a bit more closely and look at um, how we how we went and matched up against them in that game and um, probably try to emulate that considering it was a very close game yeah. and that's probably the game style that they're going to um, try bring and bring to, bring to the table on Saturday and um, you know they have probably changed a fair bit over the last um, sorry when we played them in that prelim final yeah. they've, changed, they've changed their game style a lot from then so we're going to probably have to do something different. Leon Davis um, played in grand finals hasn't played well. 
Uh, now he's got a change of role. Didn't play last year in the Premiership team. Uh, it must be a dream come true for him because I would have thought 12 months ago he would have been devastated, but it seems like he's handled it well, moved into the back line, became an All-Australian defender. It's a great story. I think it's a great story. And I think, um, you know, going into last year's grand final, I'm not too sure if he... Um, had the greatest amount of confidence in himself in the in the grand final, and then I think that that is a completely different story come this year with um, him, his role in the back line. I think he's got the utmost confidence in his role that he can execute it week in, week out, and he's uh, I think he's set for a big one come Saturday. How do you bloke to chuck forward too, just in the time of need too? He's well, got, he got one, didn't he? The on clutch Friday. goal. Mm. So it's a it's a nice string to have to your bow, isn't it? Absolutely. We're we going to see more run with roles in the grand final show. You've done it a little bit in the past. I'm assuming Cameron Ling will try and get hold of someone, whether it's Pendlebury or, or Swan, or is it a lot harder now to do it with rotations? It is a lot harder with rotations these days, but I think um, considering it is grand final and two really strong sides with, like I said, really strong midfields, um, I think we will see a fair bit of one-on-one -on -one contest going on. Do I uh, remember rightly that you were offered up as perhaps trade for the Luke Ball deal when it first came to the table? I was uh, a couple of years ago, and so um, I was quite happy to I'll still be a colleague with last year. I bet you happy yeah. that didn't happen. <laughs> Certainly has. Um, you could have been a St Kilda Premiership player. <laughs> <laughs> he might have been might a have difference. Been, oh, that's what I'm yeah, saying. I yeah. so, don't think so. <laughs> How did that sit with you, though? I mean, a lot of, a lot of players, once they've been in that situation, say, all right, you, you put me on the table, I'm out of here. And, you know, I think Campbell Brown's been in that, in that boat. He said, I'm out of here as soon as uh, my name was, was thrown up. Did it, did it affect you badly? No, it didn't affect me at all. I don't think it was really a... Uh, indication from the club. I think it was more, I, I got on really well with Brad Scott who had uh, been in a development role down at Collingwood for a couple of years and I think, um, you know, I would have had a great relationship with him at, at North Melbourne where I think that's where I would have ended up. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think that's the only reason that, that the uh, trade got brought up but I, hopefully it hasn't got anything to do with Collingwood. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, congratulations on getting through once again. Uh, it was a great game on Friday and uh, look, I think it, we all agree that it's only going to be a kick or so in it on, uh, on Saturday. So all the very best. Thank you very much. And your Good quest to go show. back to back. Yeah. Thank you very much, guys.